Amen. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. What a mighty Elohim we serve. Amen. We're grateful for our time here on today. We're thankful for this beautiful and shiny uh, holy Sabbath day. We greet all of you in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. And definitely we say Shabbat Shalom uh, to each and every one of you. Amen. We're thankful for this holy Sabbath day. It is written in this everlasting word that we are to remember the Sabbath and do what? And to keep it holy. Amen. Holy in the morning. Holy in the afternoon. Holy in the evening. Holy, amen, in the midnight hour, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Father, Abba Yahuwah, have commanded us to be you holy. Amen. How many of you just love holiness? I don't know about you, I love holiness. I love everything about holiness. It's impossible to love Yah and not love holiness. Amen. Why? Because Yahuwah is an Elohim that is holy. He is a holy spirit. Amen. Made man in his image and in his likeness. What is man? Man is a spirit. Why? Because the father is a spirit. Man is a spirit. He has a body. Amen. And he lives in that body. Possessing a spirit and a soul. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. And he lives in a body. And so in this body. Amen. He's commanded the spirit that he's placed in these earthen vessels to be you holy. Amen. So we're thankful. Amen. That the Sabbath day is holy. It's the only day that the Father, amen, called holy out of all of the seven days of the week. And uh, we're grateful to know that we came out of Sunday worship. Amen. Somebody said, well, you can worship the Most High any day and every day. You get no arguments from Brother, from brother Scott and Yah. No arguments. You can praise Yahuwah every day, all day, if that's what you want to do. Seven days a week. Huh? You listen, the most high. You don't mind if you praise him from the time you wake up in the morning and you start praising and you don't start praising until the time you go to sleep that night. And if you did that seven days a week, it'll still be in order. Because mm -hmm. he's worthy mm -hmm. of that praise. But let's be clear: there's only one day out of the week that he sanctified. That he set apart and then called that day and labeled that day holy. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 12. You see, the brother already quit with the precepts. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That's right. You got to be quick on the swords. Uh -huh. He whipped the sword out on you real quick. <laughs> Amen. What did he say, son? More, moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths. I gave them what? My Sabbaths. Uh huh. To be a sign between me and them. To be a sign between me and Israel. Come on. That they might know that I am Yah that sanctified them. Uh huh. You see, He sanctified a, a, a people. I just love the T-shirt. I dear sister got on. She got a T-shirt on that says, "I'm a set apart sister." Hmm. Why? Because the Father. Set apart a people. Amen. But he set apart a day. Amen. Before. Amen. He created all of the human family. Now let me take that back. Because he created Adam. Uh, on the sixth day. And all of the human family was in the loins of Adam. But then he come along the seventh day. And sanctified that day. Huh? Called that day holy. A set apart day. So, so we are thankful that day. Holy Sabbath day, he wants us to remember out of all the commandments, out of the ten commandments that he gave, that's the only one he said, remember. Remember to keep the Sabbath day what? Holy. Amen. So we're grateful for that on today. So we greet everybody in the name of Yahushua. Uh, we're thankful for our resurrected and soon to come king, Yahushua, uh, Hamashiach, whom the world called Jesus Christ. We're thankful, amen, for him coming down through the 42 generations to go to the cross uh, for your sins. And we're grateful for dear sister Miriam anointing the head and the body 
of our king, our savior, preparing him to go to the cross for the remission of your sins, my sins, and then all the wicked sins of the world. We're grateful to be here. And at this time, beloved one, because I see brother Yabu uh, getting ready. Come on up here, brother. Amen. Bring your holy shofar. What you doing back there, BQ, the big Hebrew? Where your shofar? Come on up here. Amen. He got his new shofar. Where your shofar at, Aki? Yeah, there you go. He got look, he got he even got his in a nice little a nice little bag. Amen. That's right. Stand up and uh, y'all blow the natural uh shofar before I hit you, hit him with the spiritual shofar. Amen. Come on, get in here. He got his new shofar too, y'all. Look, it's shiny. Praise the most high y'all. Amen. Go ahead. What you got, Ark? Yes, wonderful. Come on, Ark, what you got? Wonderful. Amen. Come on, DQ the big Hebrew. Hit it, sir. Hit it. Amen. Wonderful. Where you going? Amen. The scriptures say, gather yourselves together, O nation not designed. And come on, blow it. All together. Hallelujah. Amen and amen again. That's all right. You all right? You all right, Ark? <laughs> amen. I seen him over he, 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 Listen, he look like he done, done, done put too much air out there. Let me give him a second to catch his wind. <laughs> all praise to the most high, y'all. We're grateful <clears throat> uh, for that, brothers and sisters. You see, we are thankful that the Father has given us our culture back, our true heritage. Amen. So, yeah, man, we're going to lift up. And the scripture says, blow your shofar, your holy shofar, in the day of gladness. Amen. Out of Numbers, the 10th chapter. And this is the day that Yahuwah has made. He told us to rejoice and do what? Be glad in it. Amen. So we are in, in line with the holy scriptures. Amen. To blow the holy shofar on this holy Sabbath day. Uh, that y'all have given unto us. So we're grateful and thankful, amen, for all things. All right, beloved, let's get into the word of the Most High, y'all. At this time, I want to uh, draw your attention to go with me, amen, over to Exodus. Go with me over to the book of Exodus. Uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 20 then. Exodus chapter 20, and I need uh, verse 7 out of there. See, what we must understand, brothers and sisters, is, 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 is that the Sabbath of Yahuwah is important. The, the Holy Sabbath, I say it again, is so important to the Most High. That the Sabbath was put in place before the Father, amen, brought forth the entire human family. Because after he made Adam and set all of the human family in the loins of Adam, on the seventh day, the scripture says that he rested. He rested on that sanctified day. He sanctified that day. Meaning he set that day apart and that day unto him was holy. Amen. As we read and study the scriptures... Noah kept the Sabbath. Enoch kept the Sabbath. This was kept before the Father brought forth, amen, the house of Israel. Are you listening? And he then brings forth Israel and then gives Israel also the holy law and statue of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Six days you are to work. And on the Sabbath day, 
you are to rest. The prophets kept Sabbath. The apostles kept Sabbath. Yahushua, when he came into the earth, he kept Sabbath. And we keep the we keep the natural Sabbath. And we then also are commanded to keep a spiritual Sabbath. Meaning, in our natural Sabbath, we rest from our natural works. According to our spiritual Sabbath, we rest, amen, from the works of our flesh. Are you getting this? And so it is so important to understand, listen, that if you will not keep a 24-day Sabbath, 24, I'm sorry, a 24-hour day Sabbath, 24 hours in a day. If a person won't keep a natural 24-hour day of Sabbath holy, because the Holy Sabbath or the 24 hours of the natural Sabbath is for the, for the purpose of bringing us to a place of rest. Then how do you think the Father would desire to bring you into eternal rest? If you won't keep, amen, the 24 hour day of Sabbath rest in the natural. Are y'all understanding this? I say it again. If you won't keep a 24 hour holy Sabbath day of rest, then why should the Father give you an eternal rest? Give me the book of Hebrews, son. Chapter 2. Let me show you this. Hebrews chapter 2, man. Chapter 4, give me 9 through 11. Hebrews. And then I, Hebrews chapter 4. I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 4, give me 9 through 11. And then I need to go over there to uh, chapter 5, verse number 9. I just want to give you this because the, the, the importance of keeping the whole day Sabbath is, is, a, is, a, is a shadowing or a foreshadowing of what is to come. Because when Yahushua Hamashiach comes, we will keep Sabbath into eternity because I'm going to give you rest. From all of your labor. Mm -hmm. And that Sabbath that we'll be. That we'll receive of rest. Will be a Sabbath unto eternity. Or rest unto eternity. Are y'all understanding this? He said what son? Read it out. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9. Call the verses out. He says what? There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. There may what? There remains a therefore a rest to the people of God. There remains a rest to Yahuwah's people. Come on. Verse 10. Says what? For he that has entered into his rest. For he that has entered into the rest of the Most High. He also has ceased from his own works. He also has ceased from his own work. Are you listening? Come on. As God did from his. As the Most High did from his. So see when I'm resting on my on the Sabbath that the Father has commanded, because again, He never asked us to do something without Him leading as an example of what He wants us to do. He don't ask us to take rest if He Himself didn't take rest. And let's let, let's be clear: uh, the Most High wasn't tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory to the Father. Sleep, no I say He wasn't tired. The Scripture says He don't slumber, nor does He sleep. He wasn't tired. And then when he's leading an example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish my labor or my work of creation. So you ought to finish your work, your natural work, to take rest. Read that verse again. Verse 10 says what? For he that has entered into his rest, uh -huh. he also has ceased from his own works. He also have ceased it from his own works. Read. As God did from his. That's right. <clears throat> verse 11. Yes. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us labor to enter into that rest. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Uh-huh. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. There remains, therefore, a rest. This rest that he's talking about now is not talking about your natural rest. This is working on now your spiritual rest going over to rest in eternity, in eternal Sabbath. Come on, verse 11 says what? Let us, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Let us labor. Huh? Because he said you got to work out what? Your own salvation. Correct. Huh? 
let us labor to enter into what? That rest. Come on. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Uh-huh. You see? Now go now get Hebrews chapter number 5, verse number 9. Hebrews 5, verse 9. Because see, hold it. Because verse number 11, go back and get the, get, get, get the last part of verse number 11. Amen. Give me that. Verse 11. Like, just read it. Just pick it up at the top. Verse 11. Let let us labor therefore to enter into that rest let us labor therefore to enter into that rest come on lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief see after if any man fall after the example of unbelief meaning i don't believe that i gotta keep the natural sabbath so if i don't believe i gotta keep the natural sabbath meaning i got to bring my works to a rest then why would the father give you amen amen eternal rest Pick it up at, at chapter 5 now. Verse number 9. What does it say? Hebrews 5 verse 9. Yes. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. Hold it. Being made perfect, he became what? The author of eternal salvation. He became the author of eternal rest. That's the salvation that we're walking towards. Eternal rest. Won't be no more headaches. Eternal rest. No more sickness. Eternal rest. No more oppression from the other nations. Eternal rest. Mm -hmm. Don't got to get up and go work for nobody. Eternal rest. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because he said, all of you that labor and are heavy burden, come unto me and I will give you what? Rest. We need rest from our natural works and we need rest from our spiritual works. Because mm -hmm. the flesh is always working. Mm -hmm. When I want to do good, it seems like something come up and I try to and I try not to go that way. Paul talked about when I would do good. Evil he, is present. Yeah, he said evil is present there with me. Even when I do good. It's a one, it's a it's a it's a fight, amen, that never ends. I'm always in a battle. The Apostle Paul said, oh, I fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad he said, but what I do, I kept the faith. Mm -hmm. And because I kept the faith, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Mm -hmm. But we got to make sure that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm operating according to a 24-hour Sabbath. Keeping that rest. 24 hours. If I think I want to partake, amen, in an eternal rest. So we got folk that fight against. They fight against a 24-hour rest. The Father want to bless you. That's why we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat say be at peace. Shalom, I'm sorry, Shabbat means to be at rest and to be at peace. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Be at rest and be at peace. He wants us to he wants us to leave all of this all of our work behind on Friday evening amen he wants you to leave your work behind and if people want honor amen to keep the Sabbath the right way to come into rest and rest the right way for the 24 hours why should I give you eternal rest so he gives us what he calls the day of preparation Want us to prepare. Give you time to get all your business fixed. So when that sun drop, glory to his name, I can enter into my rest. Get, it, get your scriptures out. Amen. Eat, eat with your family. You know, the wife done cooked a good meal. Amen. She done, they made a nice spread. Come on, brother. Come to the table to eat the food. Amen. Don't get the plate, man, and run back into your little cubby hole in the corner. Come on out the cubby hole. Come to the table. Get the family together. Look and see the father want to work on our families. He want to heal us because we've been so broken and so divided. Are you listening? Want us to maintain Sabbath the way that he intended for the Israelites to maintain Holy Sabbath. So we're so grateful today for what he's doing in us. 
We lift up the holy shofar, amen, to acknowledge, amen, the holy Sabbath because it is a day of gladness unto us because we are glad that the Father blessed us and enabled us to still be here in, in, in even while we're here in the land of our captivity, we can still give them praise. Are y'all understanding this today? There's a scripture. Go give me Exodus 20 now. There's a scripture because I want to I want to help you to understand something. Exodus the 20th chapter. Uh, uh, matter of fact, go ahead and pick it up at verse number one. Let me run down through that real quick. Pick it up at verse Exodus chapter 20. I want to show you something. Come on, brother. In the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse one. All right. And God spoke all these words, saying, Uh huh. I am Yahweh thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That's right. Out of the house of bondage. I brought you. So Egypt, Egypt is synonymous, is synonymous for what? Bondage. We're in our spiritual Egypt. Meaning we're now in these United States of America. It is called the house of bondage. Egypt is bondage for Israel. Read it again. I am Yah the Elohim which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That's right. Out of the house of bondage. He's talking about the first Egypt. So what he did in the first Egypt, he coming to do it in the second Egypt. Our spiritual Egypt, amen, which is the house of bondage for us. Read it, brother. Come on off what you got. Straight, straight down. Come on, let's go. Verse 3. Yes, sir. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Did you hear that? Commandment number one out of the Ten Commandments. What did he say? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Continue to read it. Verse four. Yes, sir. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So don't have no other Elohims. Don't make unto yourself no graven image of nothing. What is a graven image? A graven image is something that's taken uh, from a hard substance of gold, silver, wood. Uh, ice, steel, iron, rock, and you take it and you carve it down into the image of something that's either in the earth, or it's, it bears the image of something that's uh, something of the heavens, or it bears the image of something that comes out of the sea. It's a graven image. When you hear the word graven, just think carved. When you hear the word carved, a carved image, I want you to think of the word statue. A statue. See, some of you may have a graven image at your home. You got to get rid of it. You might got a graven image on your desk at work. You got to get rid of it. The NBA had our people playing so hard, breaking Sabbath, and running after a trophy that is a graven image of a basketball. NFL, a graven image of a football. Are you listening? Come on, son. What did he say? Verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Somebody say, well, I didn't make it. Amen. But you went and bought it. Or someone gave it to you. You can't have it in your possession. Come on, son. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. You, you see? The graven image can't be of anything of any likeness of anything above. So people got a graven image and they call that an angel. Somebody, some people got a graven image and they say, that's the moon. Some of you got a graven image of the sun or a star. It's a graven image. Come on, brother. What you got? That is in the earth beneath. That's right. You can't have nothing that's under the earth beneath. Somebody got a graven image carved down a statue of their father. A statue of their mother. United States of America is famous for, for making graven image of dead people. Huh? Graven image. This is the land that's in with graven images. Our Hollywood, they, they, get a, they give them something called an Emmy Award. It's a graven image of a man. You're in the land that's infested with graven images. Come on, brother. What do you say? All that is in the water under the earth. See? Graven image of some fish. Graven image of some, some star. What they call a starfish. Got a graven image of something that's in the water. Gathered at your house, on your fireplace, uh, uh, listen, on your nightstand. Huh? Graven images. You go over grandmama house, grandmama got graven images of, of, of a man or a woman or, or a horse. Huh? Got a graven image of an animal. Graven image of, see, anything that's carved out from a hard substance, it's a graven image. 
And we've been taught to love graven images. You listen, you see, they even put it into the hearts of our children. When your children play sports in this country, they give them a graven image, amen, of a basketball trophy. Football trophy. Tennis trophy. It's a graven image of some man, some woman playing tennis. Some man, some woman shooting a basketball. Some man or some woman running track. That's a graven image. He said what, son? Verse 5. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down, bow down thyself to them. See? Don't bow down. Don't you, don't you do it. It's two, it's two things concerning the graven image. Don't make none or have it unto yourself. Then he said, uh, part two or part B, then you don't bow to it neither. Come on. Because no. people will make the argument, well, I got it, but I don't worship it. Uh-uh, you still can't have it. Because it's twofold. Don't have it, one. And then two, if you do got it, make sure you don't bow down to it. Read it, brother. Nor serve them, uh -huh. for I am Yah the Elohim. That's right. And a jealous God, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. You'll, get, that you'll get yourself and you'll get your family members in big trouble. Big trouble. You're craving images. See, make unto yourself, don't make unto yourself another God. Don't worship another God. Don't have no graven images. Huh? What did he say, son? Read. Verse 6. Yes. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. Do you see? See, I, I see I'm going to put something on you to the third and fourth generation. He's talking about a generational curse there. Read it, son. And keep my commandments. Yes. Thou shalt take, verse 7, thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh Elohim in vain. Thou shalt not take uh, the name of Yahuwah in vain. Read. For Yah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. He's not going to hold you guiltless if you take his name in vain. Read. Verse 8. Uh-huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day. There it is. And do what with it? Keep it holy. Now listen. Out of the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments is what he commands us to do towards him. The other six is what we do uh, when he commands us to do amongst each other. But I want you to get an understanding of something. Read verse 7 again. Thou shalt not take the name of Yah the Elohim in vain. Don't take his name in vain. Notice what he did. The first, the first two commandments, he's telling you, don't have no other God unto yourself. Don't make a graven image of nothing. Don't you bow down to nothing. Then he says, then what I want you to do is never ever take my name in vain. If you take my name in vain, you in big trouble. What you mean? Don't take your name in vain. How does one take the name of Yahuwah in vain? Number one, when you don't keep his commandments. If we fail to keep Yahuwah's commandments, we take his name in vain. Why do you say that? I want to help you. Let me show you. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 138 and verse number 2. How can I take the name of Yahuwah in vain? What did he say? Pay attention to this. Pay attention. Come on. We're here to, we here to unlearn. So we can relearn what we must learn. In the book of Psalms 138 and verse number 2. He said what? I will worship toward the holy temple. I will worship where? Toward thy holy temple. That's right. Come on. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. And I will praise thy name. Listen to that. I will praise thy name for what reason? For thy loving kindness. For thy loving kindness. And for thy truth. Uh-huh. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Hold it. Read that, read that, read that one more time. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. One more time. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Hold it. We are told not to take the name of Yahuwah in vain. Hold it. He tells us that his name is exalted, that his word, I'm sorry, is exalted above what? His name. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to take his name in vain if I don't keep his law, statutes, and commandments, his word that is exalted above his name. The word of Yahuwah is above even his name. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember to keep the Sabbath 
day holy. And if I fail to keep that commandment, then I'm taking his name in vain. Read that verse one more time. In the book of Psalms 138, in verse number two, I will worship toward thy holy temple. I'm going to worship. Come on. And praise thy name. And praise thy name for thy loving kindness. I'm going to worship and then I'm going to praise the name. How am I going to praise the name if I have broken his commandments? How can I praise you when he, and worship you when he told me to worship him in spirit and in truth? Read it, son. And for thy truth. Come on, you see? You see? And for his truth. Read it. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. See? Magnify his word above his own name. So if I come to a place, beloved, where I am not in accordance with his holy word. Then I've taken the name in vain. In the book of Proverbs 30 and verse 8. Come on, son. Remove far from me the vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Verse 9. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say who is Yah. Or lest I be poor and still and take the name of God in vain. Do you see? Read that one more time. I want them to get this. Take your time with it. Verse 9. Verse 9 says what? Lest I be fool and deny thee and say who is Lest I be fool and deny you. Read it. And say who is Yah. And I say well who is Yah. Come on. Or lest I be poor and steal. And lest I be poor and then I go out and steal. Come on. And take the name of God in vain. You see? If I lie, I'm keeping it. I'm breaking his commandments. If I steal, I'm breaking his commandments. Which leads me ultimately to take his name in vain. Are y'all getting this today? He wants us, beloved, to be obedient unto his word. Lest I take his name in vain. You see, you get these so-called celebrities. Amen. They're playing these wicked movies. They act out every wicked sin it is under the sun. Then they have them come into an awards assembly. They assemble themselves for their awards and then they had a nerve to get up there and say, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And got a big gigantic cross on, here, on or around their neck. They don't know. You have taken the name of Yah in vain. Because you lied. You got into a movie and told lies. You got into a movie and stole. You got into a movie and murdered. You got into a movie, committed fornication. You got into a movie, committed adultery. You got into a movie, you gambled. You got into a movie, committed extortion. You had taken the name of Yahuwah in vain. And watch this. You got paid. The devil will pay you to take the name of Yahuwah in vain. There are a lot of people that's making money getting paid to take the name of Yahuwah in vain. That's where we are today, beloved. That is exactly where we are. Give me the book of Proverbs. Give me Proverbs. Because, see, we must understand that as we walk this walk, beloved, I want to ask you a question. What are you thinking? What are you thinking in these last evil and wicked days? Go give me that son. Proverbs. Give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says what? For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart. Listen to this. As he think, as a man thinks in his heart. As a sister, a woman, as she thinks in her heart, what did he say? So is he. So is she. What are you thinking today? What are your thoughts today? You know, there's an old saying. There's a saying that says the foot bone is connected to the leg bone. And the leg bone is connected where? To the thigh bone. And the thigh bone is connected to the butt bone. And the butt bone connected to the back bone. Huh? Let's get an understanding that, that the mind is connected to the heart and the heart is connected to the mouth. What did he say? Read that again. For as, a, for as he thinketh in his heart, so See, is he. As a man thinketh 
In where? Did you know you can think in your heart? I don't think they caught that. You can think in your heart. Listen at it again. For as he thinks in his heart. Oh, I so didn't know. He. I didn't know I can think with my heart. Why? Because the mind is connected to the heart and the heart is connected to the mouth. That's why Yahushua said in Matthew chapter 12, he said the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. What are you thinking these days? What are we thinking? What's on your mind? Because what's ever on your mind is in your heart. And whatever is in your heart, eventually it's going to come out of your mouth. So as we're walking this walk, we want to make sure we're not taking the name of Yahuwah in vain by virtue of breaking this commandment based upon things that are in our mind, based upon that's what's in our heart. Eventually, that's what comes out of our mouth. This is why he said, be you renewed by the transforming of what? Your mind. As we are waking up as y'all chosen people in these last days, we need a transformation of our mind. And this is what got us now coming back to Sabbath, coming back to the feast day, learning now that we must keep his holy commandment. No, not nah, I'm just saved just because I believed in 1973 and then I lived like the devil. And just because I believe I'm going into the kingdom, we understand now that the Father wants us to keep holy commandments. Is that right? Go give me Revelation chapter 2, chapter 22. Give me verse. Uh, 14. Thank you, Father. Because, see, the book even closes out telling us that we must keep commandments. Yeah. Lest we take his name in vain. Come on, brother. In the book of Revelation 22 and verse 14. He said what? Blessed are they that do his commandments. I told you, blessed <laughs> are they that what? Do his commandments. That what? Do his commandments. He's closing out the book telling you do his commandments. Yeah. Keep his commandments. Christianity church don't they don't believe it you got to keep the commandments of the most high y'all mm -hmm. well, you might got some of them few of them but most of them is not telling you that you got to keep commandments because if they believe if they believe then they would understand that you got to keep these feast days mm -hmm. you got to keep the Sabbath day. they say all oh, that stuff done away with it's not done away with read it again Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed. Listen at that. He said you bless. Anybody feel blessed? I, I know the father. I'm blessed. He blessed me. You are blessed when you now have a thirst and a hunger to keep his commandments. Because once upon a time, brother Darren, we didn't want to keep his commandments. That's why we know we blessed because now I have a heart, a thirst, and a hunger, amen, and a love to keep his commandments. What scripture say, amen, keeping his commandments is not grievous. I, see, keeping his commandments, I'm in love with his commandments. I want to keep his commandments. I love keeping his commandments. Stay right there, son of Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 says what? Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Read it. That they may have a right to the tree of life. Uh oh. There are rights that come with keeping his commandments. Have a right. Huh? Have a right. Amen. That you may have a what? A right. That you may have a right to the tree of life. Don't you know everybody that won't make the kingdom will not be partakers to the tree of life? The book of Revelation talks about there are going to be 12 different fruits on that tree. And we'll be able to eat those fruit that sustain us. I call it eternal fruit. Huh? Eternal fruit. Read it one more time, brother. Blessed are they that do his commandment. That's right. That they may have a right to the tree of life. See? They go, go get me, go get me uh, Jeremiah chapter 6. Let me show you this. Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh... And get me over to verse, uh, verse number, what I need, verse number 16. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse number 16. And let's go down to uh, 16 and 17 and jump down. I want 19 out of there as well. Listen, I did Jeremiah chapter 6. Come on, son. What did he say? In verse 16. Uh-huh. Thus saith Yah. Who said it? Yah. Oh, come on. Stand ye, in the, stand ye in the ways and see. Stand ye in the ways. Of the most high Yah and see, come on. And ask for the old path. That's what we're doing now. Hallelujah. Ask for what? The old path. Ask for it. That's what we're working on now, Brother Smoke. Yeah. Ask for it. And he gonna do what? Where is the good way? 
See, that's what we're at. Where is the good way? We got see, he wants us to come back to the ancient path. Amen. All this contemporary garbage now. Amen. Men making up stuff as they go along now. Telling you that a tithe, amen, is money. When the scripture said tithe is agricultural produce and a tithe is animal, is, uh, is animal livestock. Always has been and always will be. Man come along and say a tithe is money. Abraham gave a tip of the spoil. The spoils, amen, was the stuff that he, that he collected, amen, from those that he overtook in war. And mind you now, the, the, the commandment to give tithes, amen, had not yet been given when Abraham gave a tip of the spoils. Whew. See how confused the devil will get you? I say it again. When Abraham gave a tip of the spoil, it did not. It, he didn't do it by virtue of a commandment. He just overtook his enemies and then took a tip of the spoils that he that he took from his enemies and gave it to a man, uh, Melchizedek. That's all. I dare any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any preacher, any priest, anybody to prove. That a tie was money. Anywhere in the New Testament, it always was food. Always will be food. Give me that, son. Give me Malachi. Let me just run through that. I, I, I just want to help people today. I just want to help you. Malachi chapter 3. Because we got to get these yokes and chains and strongholds broken off of the people's minds so we can return back to the ancient path. Come on, son. Malachi chapter 3, verse number, uh, pick it up at verse 6. Let's find out because the most high don't change. Man came along and changed it. Read it, brother. For I am Yah, I changed not. Uh, I told you. Man changed it. And it's written clearly in the book that if you add to my law, or if you take away from my law, he said, man, you're going to get the plagues of this book. See? Read it, son. For I am Yah, I change not. That's right. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay, you sons of Israel, you're not consumed. Read. Verse number 8. Says what? Will a man rob God? Yes. Will yet, a man rob the Most High? Come on. Yet you have robbed me. Yes. But you said, where have we robbed thee? Uh-huh. In tithes and offerings. So this is where they get you. At. They, they put the fear. I mean, they put man's fear in you. Because it's a lie. Our people was not given 10% of their money. They was given 10% of their, of their animal livestock and agricultural produce. Read it, brother. Verse 9. Come on. You are cursed with a curse. You are what? Cursed with a curse. Come on, son. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. You have robbed me, even all of Israel. Come on. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring all of the tithe in the storehouse. Read that there may be meat in my house. No. That there may be a thousand dollars in my house. Meat. Spell it. M E A T. Is that meat? That's beef meat? Huh? Because you had cow, you had lambs, you had sheep, you had goats. Animal livestock. You had agricultural produce. Fruits that come out the ground. Collard greens. Green beans. All types of stuff that come out of the ground. What did he say? Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Uh-huh. That there may be that there may be meat in my house. That's right, read. And prove me now herewith, saith Yah of hosts. Uh-huh. If I will not open you the windows of heaven that's right and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it now we broke that down amen you can go back and get the teaching out of the book of, of joel i'm gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive what's he talking about there because the gates that's up top is at the top of the dome there are gates up there he opened up the gates and he will allow abundance of rain to come down that it will bless the crops the animal livestock will have water to drink. 
I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. You won't have room enough to receive it because you're going to have an abundance and an overflow of your crops, of your food, of your animal livestock. Continue to read. Verse 11. Uh-huh. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Joel. Go get that. Joel chapter 2. Let's get that. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I want you to read uh, verse number 21. And read down through verse number 25. I want to get all of that. Let's show you now. Let's show you. Come on. Who is the devourer? Because the lion preacher said that's the devil. And then time something happened. You think the devil did it to you. See? The devourer were the, were, the, were the insects, the caterpillars, the canker worms. Read it, brother. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 21. Says what? Fear not, O land. Fear not, O who? O land. Come on, son. Be glad and rejoice, for Yah will do great things. Uh huh. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. That's right. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. That's right. For the tree bears her fruit. Do you see? Because I'm going to rebuke the devourer. Because the tree gonna bear what? Her fruit. The tree gonna bear what? Her fruit. Because I'm gonna rebuke the I'm gonna rebuke the devourer. Come on, son. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. That's right. Be glad then, you children. Yes. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Uh huh. And rejoice in Yah your God. That's right. For He has given you the former rain moderately. You see, I'm gonna give you the former rain. Come on. And and it will cause to come down for you the rain. Yes. The former rain. That's right. And the latter rain in the first month. That's right. Read it. Verse 24. Says what? And the floor shall be full of wheat. Oh my goodness. And the fat shall overflow with wine. And, and it's going to oh, your wine going to overflow. Come on, son. And I will restore to you the year that, that the locust has eaten. I'm going to restore to you that the devourer have, what the devourer have done. Who is the devourer? Continue to read it. The that the locusts have that the locusts have eaten. That the locusts, that's the devourer. The canker worm. That's the devourer. And the caterpillar. That's the devourer. And the palm worm. And that's the devourer. My great army which I sent among you. My great army which I sent among you. Go back over there to Malachi uh, chapter 3. Pick it up right back at verse number 8 and read, brother. Amen. Malachi chapter 3. I just want to hang out and just help somebody to get an understanding to know that you've been robbed at the house of Yah. You've been robbed. Amen. Paul the Apostle tells us very clearly over in the New Testament that Yah loves a cheerful giver. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He said, let a man give as his sole purpose in his heart. You can't show one place in Scripture where Yahushua HaMashiach gave 10% of his money. You can't go one place and show me where Paul the Apostle or any of the Apostles gave 10% of their money. What did he say, brother? Read it out. Will a man rob God? You see, will a man rob Yah? Come on. Yet you have robbed me, but, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? You see, come on. And tithes and offerings. Because why? Because the house of Israel was commanded that 11 of the tribe was supposed to take 10% of their crops, 10% of their animal livestock, and give it to the Levitical priesthood who were not, a, who not were able or were allowed to go out and work. But the whole house of Israel said, man, we ain't giving them nothing. So he said, if you don't give my priest nothing, if you don't take care of my priest who serve you, he says, then, look, then you ain't going to get nothing to eat. If my priest don't eat, then you don't eat. Read it, son. Verse 9. Says what? You are cursed with a curse. Yes. For you have robbed me even this whole nation. Come on. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring you all of the animal livestock and the agricultural produce into the storehouse. Read it. That there may be meat in my house. That there may be food in there for the Levitical priesthood so they can also have something to eat. Read. And prove me now herewith, saith Yah of hosts. Uh huh. If I will, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. That's right. And pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. I'm gonna pour the I'm gonna pour the former rain on your crops, so your crops, Amen. Could there could be a mighty overflow according to your crops. Come on, son. Verse eleven. Yes. 
And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And I'm going to rebuke the caterpillar. That's why you got to understand this book, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. I'm going to rebuke the caterpillar. I'm going to rebuke the devourer. That's the canker worm. I'm going to rebuke the devourer. That's the locust. Because they are my great army. That when you disobey me and you don't get 10% of your crops and 10% of your animal livestock, I'm going to send my great army. Because if my priests don't eat, ain't none of you going to eat. Read it, son. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Uh huh. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Oh, neither shall your vine cast for what? Cast shall. Take your time, brother. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Yes. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Do you see what he say? Your vine will not cast for what? Her fruit. Before the time in the field. Before the time in where? In the field. No, in at Nations Bank. Field. Before the time in, uh, 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 in P, what is it, PNC Bank? Field. Wachovia Bank? Field. Any, any other names out there? City Bank? City Bank. <laughs> huh? <laughs> See? The lion preacher. The lion preacher that is the greedy dog. That's right, I said it. Greedy dogs. Loving to just labor up in the pulpit and curl up around that little doggy pan. Huh? Fill it up with Alpo. <laughs> just fill up their little cup. Just lazy. Don't want to get a job and go to work like everybody else. Sending their children to private school. Sending them on lavish vacations. Huh? Why your children got to go to the raggedy neighborhood public school. You ain't had a vacation in 10 years. You, 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 you barely paying your car note and your car note only $225 and here it is, he riding around in a 600 S-Class 2022 Mercedes Benz. Huh? Paul the Apostle say, if a man don't work, he shouldn't what? He shouldn't eat. Glory to his name. Let me ask you a question. Did Yeshua have a job? He was a carpenter. Was Paul the Apostle, did he have a job? He was a tent maker. Did Peter the apostle, did he have a job? He was a fisherman. Let these lazy bugs get a job, just like everybody else. Give me Isaiah 56, verse number 11. I ain't no attention on working on this, but I got to go where the spirits ain't go. Come on, son. See, Isaiah chapter 56, verse 11 calls all of them greedy dogs, because that's exactly what they are. Keep your money in your pocket. Praise the most high. And let a man give as his so purpose in his own heart. Got to give nobody no 10% of your money. What did he say, brother? In the book of Isaiah 56 verse 11. Come on, son. Yea, they are greedy dogs. I told you. I told you. What the father say they are? Start at verse 10. Come on, hit verse 10. His watchmen are blind. These watchmen, they supposed to be the people that's watching for the people. See, they just love money so much. That's why I say the love of money is the root to all evil. Right. See? The love of it is the root to all evil. Come on, brother. His watchmen are blind. Yeah, what are they? Blind. They blind. Come on. They are all ignorant. What are they? Ignorant. Listen to the father. The father will cut you up, won't he? He'll cut you down to nothing. He said they, they blind. They ignorant. Come on. They are all dumb dogs. I told you. What are they? Dumb dogs. He didn't just call them dogs. He called them dumb dogs. Read it, brother. They cannot bark. Uh oh, I told you. I ain't got no bark in them. Sleeping. I ain't got no bark in them. Only thing they got to tell you, God got a blessing with your name on it. Formulate a man a fifty dollar line right here, you gonna get a blessing. Formulate a five hundred dollar line right here, you gonna get a blessing. If you ain't got five hundred, you ones that got a hundred dollar, formulate a hundred dollar line right here, you gonna get a blessing. But you that got a thousand dollars to give, uh, you 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 get over here in the platinum line. Y'all gonna really bless you. All you got to do now is walk on out there to that car dealership and, and, and lay your hands on that car that you want. Just name it and just claim it. Huh? Man, we done with that garbage. We done with that foolishness. Stick up, stick up man right in the house of y'all. What did he say, brother? They cannot bark. Can't bark. Come on. Sleeping, lying down. Sleep, just lying down on the job. Come on. Loving to slumber. What do they do? Loving to slumber. Just love to stay asleep. Read it. 
Verse 11. Uh-huh. Yea, they are greedy dogs. And they are what? Greedy dogs. They are greedy. He done told you three, four times in there they're greedy dogs. Come on, son. Which can never have enough. I told you. Can't never get enough. Amen. People just love to send these fellas on their lavish vacations. And they all they all get together. They all get together and talk about how much money they're getting out of their people. Get together and just talk about it. Ain't, ain't cast a demon out of nobody. Mm. He's just scared of a demon himself. Because mm. he, cause he, why? Because he loved to stay asleep, supposed to be watching. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 12, man. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Uh, give me over to verse number 17. See, if the father said that, that a tithe was what? If he said it was agricultural produce and, 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 and animal livestock, then a man on the earth to come along to change that. Come on, son. What did he say? In the book of Deuteronomy 12 verse 17. It says what? Thou mayest not eat within thy gates. That's right. The tithe of the corn. The tithe of your $50 bill. Corn. The tithe of your uh, uh, $1,000 paycheck. Or thy wine. The what? Or thy wine. The corn is food and wine comes from grapes, which is a fruit, which is food. Read. Or thy oil. Or what? Oil. Oh, come on, son. Or the firstlings of thy herd. Or what? The firstling of thy herd. That's your animal livestock. The tithe of the food and the tithe of the animal livestock. Read it. Or thy flocks. Or what? Or thy flock. Animal livestock. Come on. Nor any of thy vows which thou vows. Yes. Nor fewer offering or heave offering. Come on. Of thy hand. Come on. Continue to read it. Verse 18. Says what? But thou must eat them before Yah the Elohim. That's right. In the place which Yah the Elohim shall choose. That come on, man, read. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and, and the Levite uh -huh. that is within thy gates. You see the Levites, read it. And thou shalt rejoice before Yah the Elohim in all that thou puttest thy hands to do. Continue to read. Verse nineteen. Uh huh. Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite as long as thou lives upon See, earth. See, Israel, don't you forsake the Levites, the, Levit the Levitical priesthood, because I have separated them unto the service, amen, of the temple or the tabernacle. They can't go to work. So you take, you take the tithe, 10% of your food, 10% of your animal livestock and you give it to them. Then let me show you Yahushua HaMashiach. Man, give me Matthew chapter 23, verse number 23. Let's find out. Let's find out what Yahushua amen, and, and, and someone that he's having a conversation with, what did they call the tithe? Read it. In the book of Matthew 23, verse 23. Uh-huh. Woe well, unto you scribe. Woe well, unto you scribe. And, Read it. And Pharisees. And you Pharisees, come Hi on. Hypocrites. What are they? Hypocrites. That's what these brothers are today. Same thing. Same thing. What did he say? For you pay tithe of mint. You pay tithe, amen, of your thousand dollar check. Mint. Mint is peppermint. It's a herb. Agricultural produce. When you eat a piece of peppermint candy, where do you think that taste coming from? It's coming from a peppermint flower, a peppermint herb. They take it, they grind it up, and they place it in the, in the, uh, in, and mix it up with it and make candy from it. Peppermint. Mm -hmm. Agricultural produce. You pay tithe of mint, what else? And anise. And what? Anise. Anise is also a herb. Agricultural produce. Read it. And cumin. And what else? Cumin. And cumin. My wife got cumin at the house right now. Mm -hmm. Huh? Stuff that come. He said, you pay tithe of what? Pay tithes of mint, anise, and cumin. That's right. Read. And have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Have omitted the weightier matter of the law. Read. Judgment, mercy, and faith. Judgment, mercy, and faith. You see? Did Yahushua say that you pay tithe, amen, out of your $1,000 check? Did he mention money there at any point or any time? This right here is a precept that connects right back to Deuteronomy chapter 12 where we just came from. If anybody taking notes, write this down. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30 through 32. You'll learn more about what a tithe is. Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse 4 through verse 6. You'll learn more about what a tithe is. Numbers chapter 12. Verse 44, you'll learn more about what a tithe is. 
and, and excuse me, Nehemiah. I'm sorry, Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 44, and Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 3 through verse number 13, you'll find out more about what a tithe is. See? And this is what the Father wants from us in these last days to come out of all of these lies and falsehood. Because all it has done, amen, is, 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 is cut the knees from under the people of Yah. To keep them, amen, in a place they, where they stagnated and all they're doing is, is just participating in false religion. That's it. False religion, amen, got you bound, got you chained up. But when you come into the truth of the Most High, amen, you're going to know the difference because you're going to begin to have an encounter with the Most High, Yah. Are y'all listening today? Come on, man. Give me the Jeremiah I'm ready to close. Chapter 6. Go back there, man. Jeremiah chapter 6. And let me get ready to close. Jeremiah chapter 6. Let me get 16 and verse 17. And I need 19 out of there. What did he say, son? Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. Listen, I know ministers that heard me preach this teaching right here. And then they ran to their congregation. And then try to do a teaching on time. And then to debunk what I'm saying. Why? Because their congregation is connected to their rent. Huh? Their congregation is connected to that lavish vacation. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing that give it a love offering. Amen. To the man that y'all just laboring. Amen. And fighting for your soul and laboring in, in doctrine, word, and deeds. Nothing wrong with giving him a love offering. But you don't got to give no tithes. They're in a place in scripture where they gave a tithe to take care of the house of Yah. The scripture says in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, they gave a free will offering. Amen. Free will offering. They're in a temple, amen, the, the temple that Solomon built, the temple that Zerubbabel built. No one even built the temple with tithe. Because a tithe was never money. Are y'all getting this today? Amen. Amen. Give me over to Jeremiah chapter 6. Give me back over there, son. Jeremiah chapter 6. Pick it back up, man. 16 and 17. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. And then give me verse 19. You can leave it off, uh, brother DQ. Come on. Thus saith Yah, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. See, stand ye in the ways. Ask for what? The old path. That's right. Read. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? Come on. And walk therein. And walk where? Therein. Amen. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Stay right there. Why? Because we have found the narrow gate. Because he says straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. We got to stay right there. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Stay right there. Straight ahead. Into the kingdom. Come on, brother. And you should find rest for your soul. See, I told you. Because when you walk in truth, amen, you're going to find rest for your soul. Come on, huh? But they said we will not walk therein. Uh-oh, because you got some people so hard-headed, so wicked, so hell-bound, huh? So full of hell. What did he say, son? What, the, what, 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 what they say, brother? What but, they say? They, but they said we will not walk therein. Did you hear that? They say, man, we ain't walking in that stuff. What you talking about? Keeping Sabbath day. Feast days. What's wrong with you, man? I don't care what you say. I'm going to still give my 10% tie. Okay. Keep on. What did he say, brother? Verse 17. It says what? Also, I said, watchman over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the, of the trumpet. I said, a watchman over you to do what? Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. To hearken to the sound of the trumpet. That's why Isaiah said what? He said, lift up thy voice. He said, cry loud and spare not. What? And lift up thy voice like a what? Like a trumpet. Like a shofar. And do what? Show my people their transgression. Amen. Read it again, sir. But they said we will not hearken. Uh -huh. They said what? We will not hearken. They said we will not hearken. Do you know what that means? Give me, give me Zechariah chapter 7 verse 11. Let me show you this. Do you know what that means when they say we will not hearken? Anybody ever seen? See, the Father got everything covered in the script. Anybody, uh, when someone is trying to get your attention and you're angry and they grab you, they grab your shirt, and what do you do? You say, man, get off of me. Huh? That's, what, that's how the Father look at us when we're not a hearing or, or, or paying attention or hearkening to the voice of his commandments. What we're doing is saying, hey, get off of me. Let's see what the prophet got to say about it. Zechariah chapter 7 verse number 11. 
But they refused to hearken. You see? They refused to hearken. Come on. And pulled away the shoulder. What did they do? Pulled away the shoulder. Hey, get off of me, man. I ain't keeping no Sabbath day. Huh? Mm. <laughs> Glory to his name. Get off of me, man. I ain't keeping no feast day. What we do? They pulled away the shoulder. Who you think you are, y'all? You don't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Get off of me. Mm. What did they do? Pulled away the shoulder. They Get off of me. Pull away the shoulder. And stop their ears. That they come out of Christmas. You got to come out of it. Get off of me. Huh? Come out of the holidays of man. Juneteenth was raised up by the devil. Get off of me. Hmm. I'm going to keep me some Juneteenth. Going to go get me some Juneteenth ice cream. Going to wear me a Juneteenth t-shirt. Got attitude. The father said, okay. Okay. You, somebody going to lay down tonight that kept on saying, get off of me. <laughs> kept on pulling away the show. Get off of me. Father said, okay. I'll catch you when you sleep. Huh? I'll get you when you sleep. Glory to his name. Death angel, go and collect them. <laughs> Bring them to me for judgment. Huh? Get off of me. That's what they do. That's what they say. Hmm. Want to fight with you. Toggle with you. Stand up and mock the word of the father. Hmm? That's what they doing. Tell the women preacher, come out the pulpit. Get off of me. Tell me what to do. Hmm. When the scripture says, suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. A serpent authority over the man, you got to do a laying on of hand so a danger will come into the priesthood. But what do they say? Get off of me. Huh? Read that verse again, brother. Pull away the shoulder. Hard headed. Father say, Israel, I know you're stiff neck. Read it, brother. Zechariah 7 and verse 11. Says what? But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. And pulled away the shoulder. Read. And stopped their ears. And did what? Stop the ears. And did what? Stop the ears. I ain't trying to hear none of that. That they should not hear. Stop their ears. You know why they stopping their ears? You know why they're stopping their ears? Because they got itchy ears. Ooh. Somebody in big trouble. You got itchy ears. You don't want to go the way of the father. Get off of me. Huh? I ain't trying to hear none of that. You got itchy ears. In the book of Jeremiah 6, Chapter 6 verse number 10. Says what? To whom shall I speak and, and give warning? Uh-huh. That they may hear. Do you see? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. Do you see? And they cannot and they cannot hearken. Do you see? Behold, the word of the behold, the word of Yah is unto them a reproach. See? They have no delight. The word, the word, the word unto them is a what? A reproach. Is a what? Reproach. The, uh, see, us that love the Father. Us that love the Father. Hold that precept there, man. Give me Psalms, man. Psalm chapter 119. I feel all right now. Like Amen. I was, I was weary, but I feel all right now. Glory to his name. Psalm, brother. Come on, man. 119. Give me verse 33 and 34. 133 and 134. Psalm 119, 133 and 134. See, this is what we're doing now in these last days. This is why the Father has waken us up in these last days. What did he say? In the book of Psalms 119 and verse 133. says what? Order my steps in thy word. See, that's what we want the Father to do. Order my steps, Father. I'm not going to say, get off of me. Mm. I ain't going to pull the shoulder. Huh? I've been wicked all down through these years. I'm no more. You will get no more trouble out of me. Order my feet. Come on, son. And let not iniquity have dominion over me. Come on, son. 134. Says what? Deliver me from the oppression of man. Uh-oh. Deliver me. From oppression of man. So Don't would, you know that Juneteenth is a form of oppression? Hmm. hmm? It is a form of oppression. Every time you come in their face and say, give us our money, what do they do? They come out and put Maya Angelo on the back of a quarter and think you're supposed <laughs> to be satisfied. Huh? Make some Juneteenth t-shirts. Give you Juneteenth ice cream. Juneteenth bumper stickers. Huh? And the father say, America, you're wicked. Repent. What does America say? Get off of me. 
Huh? Just get off of me. Mm. Oh, I, I, I want to do what I want to do. You say, you say thou shalt not commit adultery. Glory to the Father. You can go down to court in America and get your fifth wife. What do they say? Get off of me. That's what they do. That's what they do. Oh yeah, thou shalt not steal. Glory to his name. You got a whole nation of people sitting in your land that just stole them. Huh? Let my people go. What do America say? Get off of me. Just leave me alone. That's what's going on in these last days. What do you say, brother? Verse 134. Uh-huh. Deliver me from the oppression of man. So Deliver me precepts. from the oppression of man. Come on. So I will keep thy precepts. Uh-huh. See? Chinese folk here, they get a they get a hate crime bill. Didn't they get it? Mm -hmm. Soon as Jim Crow Joe came into office. Huh? Y'all got so happy when you seen little uh, what's her name? Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Hercules. 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 Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. You got so happy. What's that other sister? They just made a Supreme Court justice. Something ja uh, Jackson or something. Jackson. 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 Huh? Bring somebody. Put him on the court. They ain't gonna make a difference there. Did Obama make a difference? Did, did Obama create a hate bill? Hate crime bill? No. Nothing. You get nothing. Why? Because we know you're going to bring your black tail right back to the polls next time. Hmm? That's right. I said it. You coming right back to the polls and all these years you got nothing. You got police brutality. You got it. Huh? Stop killing us! Get off of me! See? The father is angry with the wicked every day. Hmm. Huh? Go back to Jeremiah chapter 6. I'm trying to close up, y'all. Jeremiah chapter 6, man. Come on, man. Verse number 16. Read it out. Chapter 6, verse 16 says what? Thus saith Yah. Uh huh. Stand ye in the old ways. That's right. Forgive me. Stand ye in the ways. And see and ask for the old paths. Ask for the old path. Read it. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? Come on, sir. And walk therein. And walk in and read it. And you shall find rest for your soul. Then we're going to find us some rest, y'all. Read. But they say, mm -hmm. we will not walk therein. And they say, we ain't going to walk in it. They're going to say, get off it. They're going to pull the shoulder. Read it. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Also, I set watchmen over you. See, I did something. I set a watchman over you. That's what we need today in these last days. True watchmen. Come on, son. Saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. See, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. That's why I'm blowing my trumpet so loud. I'm lifting up my voice and crying loud and sparing not. Don't care who you are. Don't care what you are. Don't care how much money you got, how much education you got. I'm going to preach against your sin. I'm going to do it. Why? Because I want you to be in the kingdom where we all can make it to the kingdom together. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. Where we can where we can gather around God's throne and say hallelujah forever and forever and forevermore. Glory to his name. But I gotta fight against sin to get you there. Because I don't care if my wife don't go, if my son don't go, if my daughter don't go, if my mama don't go, if you don't go, glory to his name. I'm going to the kingdom. I want the kingdom in these last days. He says, What, brother? But they said we will not hearken. That's right. Verse 19. Says what? Hear, O earth. Hear, o earth. Uh -huh. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people. That's right. Even the fruit of their thoughts. See, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of what? Their thoughts. See, because as a man thinketh, so is he. Is that right? Mm -hmm. As a man thinketh, so is he. There's a scripture that says, uh, at some point, when a person won't come to the truth, he will send a strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. Mm -hmm. Paul the apostle tell the church of Thessalonica that. They won't, they won't come to the truth. They won't obey the truth. He told the Yah. So Yah said, I will send a strong delusion so that they shall believe a lie. In other words, they won't be able to believe the truth even if they wanted to. This is when the Father now turned you over to a reprobate mind. 
Because, because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. See, the measure of grace runs out sometimes. And there comes a time when the father say, I warned you, I told you, I warned you, I told you. I warned you, and I warned you, and I told you, and I told you. But now your measure of grace is going to run out. And when he turns you over to a reprobate mind, the scripture goes on to say, then they go on to do unto themselves what is convenient. Meaning every evil and wicked thing that you think of, you can't stop doing it if you've tried to stop doing it. Because I've turned you over to a reprobate mind. And when he turns you over to a reprobate mind, you are now under a strong delusion that you shall believe a lie. You can't believe the truth even if you want to. Don't play with this, Father, right here. Abba Yahuwah is the true and living Elohim. You don't want to play with him. He says what, son? Here on earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. That's right. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Because they have not hearkened unto my words. Because they have pulled the shoulder and have stopped their ears. Come on. Nor to my love, but rejected it. Uh-huh. Continue. Verse 20. Oh, that's it. We could, we could close it right there. We can close it right there. Close it right there. Come on, give Yahuwah a hand clap of praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. We all want to go to the kingdom. I, I'm just determined. And I don't believe I'm the only one here that want to make the kingdom. Anybody want to make the kingdom? Amen. That's what it's all about, beloved. I mean, you know, we don't want to get caught up with the love of the things of this world. You know, the scripture said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and do what? Lose his soul. Amen. The Father just loves to love on us when we love on him. To Yahweh, last be the glory. All right. Uh, if anybody uh, needs to repent of their sins, maybe you backslide. I know that everybody here is a believer in Yahushua HaMashiach. Uh, but if you're streaming it live uh, via social media, maybe you have not repented of your sins. Turn from your evil and wicked ways. Amen. This is an opportunity for you to do that. The Father still got his air, amen, coming into your lungs and leaving your lungs. And as long as you are breathing, you got an opportunity, brother or sister, to repent. To be godly sorry for all of your sins and your wicked ways. Amen. At the end of the day, the Father just wants fellowship with you. But what you got to do is repent and be God and sovereign in your heart. Believe that Yahushua, Hamashiach, that's whom the world called Jesus Christ. Believe that the Father sent him down through the 40 and two generations to go to the cross to die for your sin. This is a personal thing. He died for your sins. If you were the only person on the earth that was on the way to hell and everybody else is guaranteed to be in the kingdom he still would have sent his son to come down to go through the same exact torment and torture amen that you might be saved amen he wants to redeem you by the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach but you gotta repent you must believe that he is the son of the living Elohim of Israel if that's you you're tired of working for the devil, living for the devil, and now you want to go, amen, and uh, walk in the way of holiness. You want to put your faith, trust, and hope in Yahushua Hamashiach. If that's what you want to do, dial the number 301-232-8668 is the number. Maybe you have backslided. If that's you, the father, amen, said that he is married to the backslider. You simply just repent. Turn, amen, from the wicked ways. Come on back to the Father, and I guarantee you he'll receive you with open arms and love. But you got to turn, amen, from those ways of wickedness and be godly sorry in your heart. Amen. The Father is full of love, but I want you to know also he is full of wrath. Amen. We don't want to meet, amen, a, a angry, amen, and a vengeful and a wrathful, amen, Elohim. He wants you to be about his business. And his business is to be all about the way of holiness. If that's you, one more time, dial that number. 301-232-8668 is the number. We want to meet with you. We want to fellowship with you, pray with you, encourage you, and take you to the water and baptize you in the name that's above every name. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give Yahuwah a hand clap of praise. We're thankful unto him. Come on, let's stand to our feet, beloved, and let's get ready 
to close. Amen. Maybe you're in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area and uh, you want to come out and hang out with us and fellowship and worship the Father. Amen. We had some pretty good worship here. What y'all think? I think we had some pretty good worship. Amen. We worship the Father and give him praise and you're more than welcome to come out. Hang out with us. 4216 and uh, that's at Howard Road, Beltsville, Maryland, the zip code 20705. Is that right? 20705. That's it. Okay. Again, 4216 Howard Road, Beltsville, Maryland, zip code 20705. You're more than welcome. And then we worship every Sabbath. And you can come and hang out with us at 10 a.m. every Sabbath. To Yahweh, that's the meeting code. All right, let's close out with a word of prayer. Eternal King Father, we bless you, we exalt you, magnify you. We thank you for the word that we heard on today. We pray you will stir up your people, stir up our hearts, stir up our minds according to the word that you have spoken unto us. We thank you, Father, to help us in these last days to continue to run the race unto the end, whereby it is written in your word, he that endures to the end shall be saved. We thank you, Father, for those that are hurting, mourning, troubled in their soul, their spirit. We pray, Father, you would grant them peace. You would enable them, Father, to now, Father, y'all receive your joy. Pour your joy deep into the corridors of their heart, soul, and spirit, whereby you said the joy of Yahuwah shall be your strength. Be that person's strength today. Meet every need that we have. We thank you that you continue to allow us to live on your earth. But help us, oh Father, in the areas of our lives where we're weak. We pray, Father, the strongholds, chain yoke will be broken and torn down. And we will rise up, Father, and be acceptable by the way that we live in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. We thank you. We believe in by faith. As we ask this prayer, we always pray in the name of Yahushua. Now as we turn toward the east, Eternal King, we thank you to bless us, to breathe on us, to walk with us, to keep us safe and sound throughout the week. We pray you will continue to smile upon us. And may your spirit be with our spirit as we say, Quam Yasharala, Quam Yasharala, in the name of Yahushua. And together, people of Yahshua say, Amen. Shalom, shalom to everybody. Amen, amen, amen. Reach your name with us. Hallelujah.